Right, will the cartridge come out in one piece? Oh, let's hope so. See, when it gets like this, I always just give it a little wiggle. You want to tease it out. You can go gung-ho on it and then it will break inside, which we don't want. Come on. Gently does it. How are we doing everyone? Welcome to today's jobbing day. What are we today? 22nd of April. I've not had the greatest start today, I'll be honest. I don't know what happened, but I threw up this morning, been sick, literally emptied the whole contents of my stomach, don't know where it was. Um, so I'm feeling a little bit ropey today, but we're gonna just try and power through. Not a massively intensive, labor intensive day, First job I've got now is a full service in the main Eco Elite. I have done a dedicated video on it, so I'll link that in the description, but I'll still record what I do today. They've also just said to me that they've got some issues where the heating keeps coming on by itself. So I don't know if that's a thermostat issue or if it's a possibly a PCB issue or something like that. So we'll investigate that as well. I've also got this big radiator to fit. Well, not big, it's 450 high by 1200 wide. So I've got that to fit later on at another job and I've got two boiler service and gas safeties to do. So I'm not gonna film the boiler service and gas safeties. I'm gonna film this job. I'm gonna film the radiator job. And yeah, we'll go from there. But if you haven't already, please don't forget to do the good deed and hit that like and subscribe button. You'll probably make me feel a little bit better as well. But let's uh, get everything loaded up and let's get inside and let's get on with the first job. All right, here we go. I've got Eco Elite 30 Combi. Gas meters are there, so drop test has just been done. That's all fine. Now it looks like they've had some work done on this boiler before. So 2023, plate's been changed, the thermistor's been changed, and last year it seems the PCB's been changed as well. So I can see there's two thermistors that have been left there. Now they've said that when they turn the boiler on, even without any demand, the heating seems to be coming on. So let's run, let's do that first. So if we just put it on there, No, it's not. Hmm. Okay. All right, I'm gonna put the gas on, run a hot tap and see if what it actually means is, is the heat going down the heating pipes when they run the hot water. So let me try that first. All right, typical, it's not doing it now whilst I'm here. Turn it on again, no demand. So I thought it might be a faulty stat, sending a false switch live back to the boiler, but no, it's behaving itself. I'm gonna be stripping it all out, doing the whole full service and everything, and then we'll see if it does anything afterwards. I've just drained it out, luckily kitchen sink's right here. And now I'm going to recharge the expansion vessel, take out the burner and everything and go from there. The boiler's all back up to pressure. Expansion vessel has been recharged, filter's been cleaned out. Now I'm going to start stripping the burner out. But this is a little bit concerning because I was I was pretty sure it's a 13mm socket for these nuts. But when I these nuts, but when I put this on and I'm doing that, that's moving. I thought it's moving loosely on it, so then I thought, okay, maybe I got it wrong because I haven't done a service on one of these in a while. Maybe it's a 10mm. Obviously 10 mils too small. Got a 12 mil out of there. That's too small in there. And then I realized, look, that's not even been tightened up properly. That's only been hand tight. 
wonder if any of the others and the, the others seem okay but yeah that one was only hand turn I thought that was maybe spinning around but all right let's get them all off anyway I'm replacing the burner gasket on that the electrodes and so on and so forth Alright, burners out. Now these heat exchangers, they're a little bit tricky to clean because of the shape of it. You can't really get a brush in there or anything like that. So the only thing you can really do is wash it out. So I've got the car share in that. This trolley, by the way, is well handy. I picked up from Audi, like one of the special buys things, was like 12 or 14 quid, but that folds up into literally like a flat pack. But for servicing stuff, it's brilliant. I think you can get something similar for Amazon if you just look for folding trolley. But yeah, the burner itself, not in too bad nick. Even the electrodes, normally that rectification probe just becomes all warped and twisted, but it's actually not looking too bad. It is slightly warped, so we're going to be replacing it regardless, but it's not the worst. And even that doesn't actually look too, too bad. So we'll wash it through, give it a clean, then clean out the condensate trap, replace that seal, pop it all back together, and then start doing our 26.9 checks. Kasha OC3 portable pressure washer. Brilliant. For cleaning boilers. Oh, and splashing yourself in the face. that little brush and then flush the rest of it through as well so electrons have been replaced and just to show you the comparison of the old ones see the rectification probe how it's warped and twisted to the right that one is going straight up so it's not the worst, but it still needed replacing there because that eventually would have probably caused intermittent E133 errors, potentially explosive ignition as well, if it's not some rectifying or if it's not getting the spark through properly. Always good practice to change this and the burner seal on these boilers. I'm going to pop them all back together. Josh is calling me, so let me take his phone call and then we'll get back to this. We are back together now. Drop test wise, obviously that connection is after the gas valve, that connection is after the gas valve, so we're not really going to know. I have changed the fiber washers on them because whenever I disturb them, it's just best practice. I mean, they cost pennies, so swap them out. I'll run my gas sniff around both connections when I get the boiler running. Need to put the power on, which is up there. Come on, I know the plug's out as well. All right, let me jump up there, plug it all back in, power it up, and see if it's still behaving itself or if it's still showing up with a demand without a demand and then we'll go from there all right we are powered on and yeah no demand so now what i'm going to do first i'll just pop this into service mode low that's just there you go see that's just to let it vent and your air right in this, I was put it in service mode low because this boiler doesn't actually have a purge function. So I'll put it in service mode low, let it get rid of any air that's in the main heat exchanger, which it's doing now, I can hear the AAVs hissing away. Once it's done that and I'm happy with it, obviously the gas is off, so it's not actually gonna fire up. And that's fine anyway, because that way, I can also test my safety devices now. And then I'm gonna grab my sniffer out the van, check those two connections after I put the gas back on. Then we'll do our 26.9 checks. And if it all is good, we are out of here. So I just had it on and running the hot tap and there is heat flowing down the heat and flow pipe. So I've got myself a new diverter cartridge. The customer had already told me about this beforehand, so I've given them a price for it already. And I told them if it is that, then this is how much extra it's gonna be. So I'm gonna check the actuator. It looks like the actuator might also need replacing as well. 
So I've got that one here as well, but let's get the head off, let's get it drained back out again, and then let's go again. All right, will the cartridge come out in one piece? Oh, let's hope so. See, when it gets like this, I always just give it a little wiggle. You want to tease it out. You can go gung ho on it and then it will break inside, which we don't want. Come on. Gently does it. Okay, it has broken inside, but I think I should be able to fish it out. Uh, the water is a bit hot in there, so let's put a glove on. It's literally just a plastic bit around it. I'm going to be really careful with this. I mean, it's not the end of the world. If, if it does, it just means I've got to disconnect the bloody flow connection from the bottom. But if I can get it out like this, it'll just make my life that much easier. Got to be gentle because these ones are plastic. So, given the opportunity, they will crack inside and snap. I feel like it will come. All right, let's try. A hook and pick set. Oh, it's turning. I think my luck has just, there we go, happy days. Let's just make sure, yeah, there's the little spindle thing inside, so for that, I think I'm just going to have to, yeah, because I ran the boiler, it's hot. There we go, there's the bottom bit. Let's make sure there's, yeah, there's another little spring in there. That is the last bit that I'm struggling now to get out. There it is. Oh, I dropped it. There, 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 there. Right, sweet. Got that spring out, let's make sure. There's no other broken bits left inside there. Nope, that is just the isolation valve now. Yep. All right, lovely. Now I can wind this in. Now the trick with this is you want to pull, push the plunger down whilst you're winding it in. And we'll just use a 10 mil hex key. Push the plunger down. Wind that in. Because otherwise when you get to the end, you'll find it will get hard to tighten. As this, I can pretty much do it by hand the whole way. You see the rubber o-ring? Can't see it no more. Grips, give it a little nip.
Yep. Cool. Right, now I'm going to pressurise it and then uh, check it for leaks and then we'll put it all back together. Good thing I brought a new actuator as well because, yeah, that been leaking. I'm surprised. Actually, it was probably on its way up because there's, luckily there's no water come through the terminals or I can see a little bit of scaling there. It's probably starting to come through, but that would have probably then start tripping the electrics out if water got into the actuator and into the terminal. So swapping out the actuator as well, pressurize, no leaks, gonna let it purge out and then do my 26.9 checks.